I've referred to America as fantasy land, but it was always also Tomorrowland. 400 years ago, back in the time that we think of as totally rustic and primitive frontier land, new was in the name, the New World. That was the brand from the start, exciting and attractive because it was an entirely unfamiliar blank slate. People by the thousands left Europe abandoning the old world, sailing to the new world to improvise new lives and new ways of life, to invent new identities. The new inhabitants created new communities they called New England, New Netherland, New Amsterdam, New Hampshire, New Salem, New York, New Orleans, New Haven, New London, New Jersey, new everything. The religion of the newcomers was itself new. Protestantism had existed for less than a century when the English Protestant settlers arrived. The particular sects of the early settlers were all so feverishly new. Puritans, here to build the New Jerusalem, Quakers, Shakers, Mennonites, Amish, Methodists, Baptists, that they required a new place, empty of too many disapproving white people, in which to practice and propagate their peculiar faiths. And then, uniquely in Christendom, Americans proceeded to create and spin off new new religions, massively successful ones, from Mormonism to Christian science to Pentecostalism to Scientology, as they continued to do. Here in America, we embraced and encouraged, as no other country had before us, a new and different approach to making and selling things, entrepreneurialism whereby almost anybody was unusually free to give any business or religion a go. The discovery of America offered a thousand new paths to fortune, Alexis de Tocqueville wrote after spending most of 1831 crisscrossing the United States, and placed riches and power within the reach of the adventurous and the obscure. The passions which agitate the Americans most deeply are not their political, but their commercial passions. Americans affect a sort of heroism in their manner of trading that the European merchant will always find very difficult to imitate. The young Tocqueville had been dispatched by the French government to the young United States to study its new approaches to incarceration but he chronicled and marveled at every variety of non-European novelty he came across. A new science of politics is indispensable to a new world, he wrote in Democracy in America, and Americans' love of novelty was being restrained only by lawyers and their superstitious attachment to what is antique. He realized that the American character derived from a self-conception of being new and always embracing the new. The inhabitants of the United States are never fettered by the axioms of their profession. They escape from all the prejudices of their present station. They are not more attached to one line of operation than to another. They are not more prone to employ an old method than a new one. They have no rooted habits, and they easily shake off the influence which the habits of other nations might exercise upon their minds from a conviction that their country is unlike any other, and that its situation is without a precedent in the world. America is a land of wonders in which everything is in constant motion, and every movement seems an improvement. The idea of novelty is there indissolubly connected with the idea of amelioration. No natural boundary seems to be set to the efforts of man, and what is not yet done is only what he has not yet attempted to do. In America, the idea of novelty is indissolubly connected with the idea of amelioration. New equals improved, progress apparently built in. The creation of America and then the United States coincided exactly with the Age of Enlightenment, the early 1600s to late 1700s. Ours was a nation built from scratch meant to embody the best Enlightenment principles and habits of mind, freedom of thought and speech, embrace of reason and science, and most importantly for this discussion, a foundational belief in the idea of human progress. The United States was a self-conscious incarnation of the modern idea of purposeful, rapid progress, that is, of seeking and expecting one's life and society to be perpetually new and improved. 